all the time. Why, how do you live your life so happy? Shit. <laughs> I can tell you. Hold on a second. Yes, I'm ready. Mm. That just reminded me of a scene diary of a mad black woman when she's like when she has like plain ass <laughs> like these things these greens with tomatoes dry ass tomatoes no salad dressing no nothing that's how you know she was ready to have her meal she just threw it on a plate and said <laughs> i get asked a lot of questions like how do i get up every day and deal with my son not being in my life mm. I used to struggle with that a lot. Every single day I would wake up stressed, crying, depressed, having suicidal thoughts. Um, it got really bad and it was bad for a long time. After I lost my son, I was in a state of shock. I can say that now because it's been like over five years. I was in a state of shock initially. I was in a severe state of shock. Like I was just like, I just, I was confused. I didn't understand. A lot of the things that were happening, I was very confused. And I was going through what I like to call a living funeral, which means you're going through some shit. You got to cut off family members. You got to cut off friends. You got to cut off boyfriends husbands you got to cut off cousins like you just got to cut people off co-workers like you just gotta cut everybody off so for me when i first like couldn't get like a hold of my son i that was one of the most i just felt really alone like i just felt really alone mm. but then Girl, I went through it. At first, I was like drinking every day, just trying to just like cope, and it was crazy. I went, I had some really, really dark days. But after a few years of being confused, because I was confused for a long time, I'm not kidding, it must have been like, I was just like in this autopilot daze mode. I don't fucking even know how to explain it. And then all of a sudden, this light switch went off, and I was like, oh shit. The only reason why is to hit a trigger, to hit a daily trigger. Once I realized like, oh shit, let me put it to you like this. And this goes on both sides, male and female. When a man or a woman weaponizes somebody else's child to hurt that other woman or male, he's still in love with her, hands down. It has nothing to do with, oh my God, the safety of my son. And oh my God, like, no, I just, this woman is dangerous. She's dangerous. How the fuck was you with this bitch for seven, eight years? And she's dangerous. She's dangerous, but you got her pregnant. Not once, but twice. She's dangerous, but you had her in your house. All of a sudden, she's a danger to the baby after he's six years old. So she wasn't dangerous the first six years of his life. Just now, all of a sudden, she's just a dangerous person. So it's basically a person taking a situation and milking it extra thick to thick to the point where it becomes fucking butter or some sort of yogurt so fucking thick. They milk it and milk it and then beat it and beat it and beat it until it just fucking thickens. And then it's like, holy shit. This person is purposely trying to hit a trigger to keep me in a certain state of mind. Oh, hell no. Nah. When I got an, when I had that epiphany, oh no, I'm living my best days. Nope. I'm not going to continue to feel guilty every fucking day of my life because my son's not in my life. Something happened over five years ago. A one-time thing happened. Like, I had a fucking breakdown. This, this is how you know motherfuckers are fucked up. Here you are going through an emotional and mental breakdown. And the first chance that they get to kick you and make sure that you're in a fucked up situation, they're going to take it. And the reason why they took it is because they've always had those feelings bottled up 
inside of them and they found the perfect opportunity to pull the trigger. That's why and that's how. So, mm. once I figured that out, I was like, no man or no woman is gonna keep a child away from the other person when clearly there's no real danger, there's no real harm if they're not still in love with that person. They're using that as, they're weaponizing the children as an excuse to A, control that person from afar emotionally and mentally. Once you understand that, you take all your power back. Okay, so we had an incident happen over five years ago. I've been documenting my life every single fucking day. I write in a diary. I write in a five-year um, diary for my son on top of my own diary. I vlog every day. I had just called my son, um, like literally like a week ago, called his phone again because they had blocked my number. Called again, the phone rang. I'm like, oh shit, cool. Leave a voicemail. Actually sent a text message that got delivered. The next day I call and text again, my number has been blocked. I've sent emails. I've sent Skypes. So the reason why I can wake up every day and be happy with my son not being in my life is because I know I'm not the one doing it. Why am I waking up? I'm not the one keeping my son from me. That's whoever has him right now, they're doing it. They're pushing every effort that they can to keep us apart. Do they think they can keep that up forever? Why do you think I stay so chill? They can't keep that up forever. We live in a world of social media. It is just a matter of time before my son is like, I want to talk to my mom and find out what the deal is with my mom. You don't think people are going to go back and be like, is your mom lean on rated? At first, it's going to be like, oh my God, you know, your mom used to be a prostitute and a stripper. Oh my God, like, ew, ew, you should be embarrassed. Like, they're going to try to shame him into not having a relationship with me, right? But he's going to get older. And when he does get older, things are going to sink in different. He's going to start to do some research. He's going to start to be like, wait a minute, shit's not adding up. Shit's not fucking adding up. And when that moment comes, I will be more than prepared for my son. Oh, honey, what do you want to know about me? Here's a full diary that I've kept for years. Handwritten diaries. Here you go. This is everything. Every day I thought about you, every moment I had, every thought I had with you. They're going to have to explain to my son on why there was such a huge gap where I wasn't in his life. And once my son realizes that it was intentional, that his father on purpose intentionally kept us apart, that I kept calling, that every day I would send a Skype message, that every day I would, you know, make sure that I reached out and documented the fact that I'm trying to reach out to my son. There is no explaining that to any human being as time passes. That's why I wake up every day happy because although they think they're still fighting a war by keeping us apart, I already won. I already won. There is no, there's no fight. There's no battle. There's just complete and utter domination. When I speak to my son, whenever that time comes, he's going to know what's up. I'm the realest bitch that will ever be in my son's life, hands down. I don't give a fuck where I came from. Because the same people that are trying to criticize me and be like, Ayo, Nina is the stripper. Nina was a streetwalker. Nina was a hooker. Nina was a prostitute. Must I remind these motherfuckers that that's where his baby, that's where my baby daddy met me. The fuck? That's where he met me. So before you criticize the actress that's making the porn, don't watch him. How are you watching porn and criticizing the actress? How are you in the strip clubs fully participating? That's why I can wake up every day and live my best life without my son being in it. Because I'm not the one not calling. I'm not the one not emailing. I'm not the one that's not paying child support. I'm paying child support. I pay dollars every month on child support on a baby that I can't even tell you real talk, no bullshit. I can't even tell you if he's alive. One thing that when people try to bring up my son in the comment section, I think it's so fucking such a, it's such a tacky low blow. Like, it's like, you must be really insecure as a woman and as a mother to bring up the fact that I don't have my kid. Bitch, everybody on the internet knows that I don't know where my son is and I don't know how he's doing. 
That's not news to anybody. Like, oh, well, where's your son? How's your son doing? Bitch, I don't know. Do you? Do you want to tell me how the fuck he doing? Let me know. Let me know how the fuck he doing. Do you know something I don't? Please, if you have information, I'd be, I'd be more than happy to receive it. But you asking me how my son is doing, bitch? I don't know. How the fuck I'm gonna know? <laughs> Why are you asking me? I call every day. I text, I email, I Skype. What the fuck are you asking me for? Go ask them. Mm -mm. I used to let that control me. I used to wake up every day crying. Like, y'all don't even understand. I don't think you guys understand how much, how. It's a good thing that I'm not a weak minded bitch. I've had weak moments. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> what? Bitch. I've had some fucking weak ass fucking moments. I've been at my breaking point. <laughs> I've been there. Trust me. It's ugly. But as a strong female, once I knew, I'm like, ooh, they're trying to break you, bitch. I'm like, ooh, these motherfuckers are trying to break you, bitch. Rise up, honey. I swear to God, don't nobody pep, pep talk me better than I pep talk myself. I breathe life into myself. I breathe life into anybody that is next to me. My aura, I have the aura of a healer. I have an aura of a teacher. Like I always want to teach something and make sure that you good. And my aura, I'm a Virgo, so I'm very mothered and I'm very like, yo, I got you. I feel like um, this is weird, but the way I see my life is like I'm an angel that has walked in hell, understands what hell is like, and I can come back and be like, yeah, you're right. My angel wings, they burnt the fuck up. I'm missing a few. You're right. My halo, that shit's hella though. I, do I even have one? Like, is it still there? My shit right now may be out of fucking charcoal. It's I've been in hell for so long or I was in hell for so long. But coming out on the other side, I'm like, nah, you a bad bitch. Hell yeah. I'll turn I'll take these burnt wings any time of day. Any time of day because these crispy ass fucking angels with perfectly flawless, untainted wings and these golden halos. This is just me describing shit. I don't really know how they look, because I wish I would, I wish I did know. But you know, and, and they're so shiny and so bright. I think that's great. But you ain't never been through nothing. So you can't teach me nothing. I want to talk to that motherfucker that's broken down. That been there. I want to talk to the ones that are at the fucking bottom. Because they know some shit that the motherfuckers that ain't never been to the bottom don't know. They don't know that. So when... These motherfuckers try to use my son as a weapon to keep me mentally weak and spiritually weak and emotionally weak. These motherfuckers have no idea that they have woken up the phoenix inside of me. I'm like, did these motherfuckers think? Did they really fucking think that I was just going to stay down? But now all of a sudden, let's play the Nina's a dirty bitch card. Let's play the eel. Nina used to be a prostitute card. Oh my. Oh my God. That bitch like, how much dick? She did what? She's fucking filthy. She's used. She's abused. That bitch is loose. But it's funny because the same dudes that are tricking off on hoes, getting the hoes pregnant, busting nuts all up in these hoes. It's the same dudes that want to go around talk about, ew, she was a hoe. You got motherfuckers criticizing porn stars and street walkers and hookers. Participating. Paying for the admission. Showing up at the party first. Pussy will be released January 1st, 2021. These motherfuckers are in line December 31st, 2020. Talking about, oh shit. And then they want to talk shit about the stripper and the hoe. How you get a hoe pregnant? Don't let these men or these women control your emotions by using your children. 
Don't do that. If your baby daddy or baby mama want to act up, want to keep your kids from you, want to be done, start living your best life. Because that baby's going to grow up. <laughs> you know how many times I've seen that happen? I've actually witnessed this happen. I'm not kidding. Where the mom, because I'm surprised it's happening to me. I'm like, yo, this is a dude doing it. Like, it's, it's crazy to me. I'm like, usually it's women that would be like, no, you're not going to see the baby. Fuck that. You're not going to see the baby. I'm going to keep Tommy away from you. Fuck you, John. You women really think, and I'm going to talk to you ladies out here because I know I got a lot of females. Do you women really think that that's hurting that man? It'll hurt him for a little bit. It will. You got him for a little bit. You know, you're pulling the emotional string. You keep fucking with his kids. This is going to happen. That man's going to move on to another woman. That kid is going to grow up. Okay? Once your child grows up and realizes what you did, there's no coming back from that. As a mother or as a father, you do not have the right. Biggest fuck up motherfuckers do. You do not have the right to rob that child of their time with the person that helped create them. If your child is in no harm and is in no danger, use a piece of shit. That's just truthful. Ain't no dude gonna make no baby with no bitch after, pay attention now, after being with her for a while. We're not talking about these, oops, the bitch got pregnant. Oh, shit, I got to deal with it. No, purposely creates life like, yo, we're going to go home and we're going to make a baby. They don't do that purposely with a crazy bitch. And I don't want to hear the bitch went crazy because we already know that if the bitch went crazy, it's because you did all of that to drive that bitch to that crazy point. That's facts. And it's the most cowardly shit that any person can do. Is to use their kids. It just, I realized how powerful I was as a woman when I saw a man trying to keep my kid away from me to destroy me. I was like, damn, bitch, you're powerful. Look how far this motherfucker is willing to go to try to tear you down because he knows you are the real Phoenix. I think that the part where people go wrong, not just women, I think that the part where people go wrong in general is you give. Two fucks about what other people think about you. Good luck with that life. If you're living your life because of how other people view you, oh my God. Honey, you will never live life. You will never live life because your life, your actual life, the one shot that you have at living your life is being controlled by the opinions, thoughts, and judgments of the people around you? You got one life to live. You wanna travel the world, bitch? Get on a plane and go. You wanna paint? Pick up some paintbrushes. You wanna sing? Pick up a fucking mic. You wanna write? Pick up a pen, bitch. You wanna rap? Start doing your shit. You wanna dance, bitch? Put on your fucking tapping shoes on. Put on your tutu. Do what the fuck you wanna do. Bitch, do that. Don't let other people judge you. Don't. Now, I'm not saying, oh, well, you know, mm, everyone should turn out to be a hoe. I'm not saying that. I'm saying every woman should know their fucking worth. And when these pathetic ass men try to bring them down to the pedestal and shame them for being just as sexual as they are, you can go to hell with all that shit. Fuck you. You going to shame me for being just as sexual as a man? You got me fucked up. So when I'm asked... How do I wake up every day with a smile on my face without having my son in my life? It's one very simple answer. 
I chose happiness over the misery that somebody else is trying to put on me. Bottom line. I chose my happiness and I will not be triggered by any motherfucker that thinks they have any kind of power over me. You are powerless. I wake up every fucking day with a smile on my face. Now, it'd be totally a lie if I told you that sometimes I don't be like, oh my God, I miss my son. I love him so much. But you know why I don't have to worry about that? Because I have a track record of how much I miss my son every fucking day. I keep a track record of my feelings for my son. Hi, Maximus. How are you today? I am thinking about you. I do hope that you are well. And I do hope that the people around you are treating you good. I don't know much about you. I don't even know your shoe size. I can't tell you the last time you were sick. Or are you even okay with everything that's going on in the world today? Did you graduate? What grade are you in? Did you pass? What are your what what's your um what are your grades? You see what I'm saying? And that's how people do you. When people try to control you with your kids, <laughs> bitch, be more like a hoe, straight up like that and get your power back. Don't let these fools control your emotions. It just goes to show how powerful you really are where they really still feel years later that they want to hold on to something that they know you love. They want to keep it from you. You know why they want to keep it from you? Because they haven't let go of you. And that is the only way that they can still hold on to a piece of you. Bitch, that is facts. If your baby daddy or your baby mama is keeping the kids away from you and you know damn fucking well that you ain't no danger to them kids, believe me when I tell you, they still in love with you.